still hard stuff. He's going to go home tomorrow um, to Seattle, and uh, and then he'll uh, rejoin us in Chicago. That's the plan of attack right now. There's, from everything I've been told, there still aren't any final plans on the services and everything else. So once we get information on that, we'll obviously have to make those decisions based on our schedule and, and everything else. But, you know, um, we would hope to, um, for sure, uh, at least make that available to everybody. Uh, but uh, there, that has not been, those plans have not been finalized, or at least I haven't been told about it. Isaiah's just going back to be with his family. He's had a and he's played great, you know. In the last month, he's been really terrific. Um, was really good in game one, and uh, you know I thought they had a lot of guys play really well. But you know, obviously everybody around here and everybody that's been around him knows what he's, um, you know, knows what he's capable of, especially in these big moments. And um, I thought he played great. I mean, everything is so, um, you know, obviously with a guy that's achieved and accomplished as much as he has on the court, um, you know, everybody's gonna gonna certainly, um, you know, scrutinize when things don't go well. And, uh, you know, to his credit, um, you know, I think he's playing as well as I've seen him play in the last couple of years right now. Well, I mean, you know, I said this the other day. It's hard to – the bottom line, it's quiet. Um, but, um, you know, hey, uh, everybody really feels feels for the guy. Like, there's – there's you know, we're, we're together all the time. Uh, it's a great group of guys. And we realize that we have a job to do and we have to prepare to do our job as well as we can. Um, but at the same time, you know, there's a strong relationship there. Coach, um, game one used uh, for a bench rotation, used a uh, much different rotation in the second half than the first half. Is that something that you figure is going to continue to be game flow dependent, or are you hoping to come down to eight, nine? Well, I thought we, 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 we hit a, a dry spell there in the first and, and just wanted to, uh, wanted to try something different. Um, but obviously, you know, I thought we, we had our moments, but um, their bench was really good. And you know we probably we need to be better. Uh, there's no question about it. I thought Portis was maybe the difference in the game when you really broke it down. Other than the defensive rebounding, um, you know you expect Rondo to play well. You expect Wade to do what Wade did. And you expect Butler to be Butler. Um, but he was the one that that um, you know really had a great game, above average game for what he did on the season. Um, but that's what guys are capable of, and you got to be great in trying to break that rhythm. We didn't do a great job of it the other night, um, and we hurt ourselves by not rebounding and turning the ball over in the first half. But, you know, there's two teams out there. There's a reason we didn't rebound it, and there's a reason we were turning it over. They did a good job. Brad, how important is it to, for Jalen as a rookie to, to get his first playoff minutes, and what did you see from him? Yeah, I mean, I thought he did some good things. Um, you know, obviously uh, made the big shot right in front of our bench. Um, you know, I thought he was pretty locked in to what we were trying to do. Um, but, you know, all, all, all told, I thought he did some good things. You know, we, we said, hey, we've got a rebound. You know, what do you, what do you, yeah, you know, you know, Scal, like, no, like, I know. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I I would only I would only say that because you know exactly what it is. Like you, we just got to do it, right? At the end of the day, we're gonna have to. We're not gonna win every rebound. That's a 50-50 rebound. If 
you know, um, just from a size standpoint. But we got to do a better job of hitting early. We got to do a better job of making sure that we block out corner crash, you know, all of those types of things. And when I mean hitting early, I just mean if two bodies are going to come together on a rebound, whichever one hits first usually has the advantage, right? And we need to hit first. Um, and, you know, I thought we actually did that a couple of times. And they got the ball because, you know, whatever, the bounce or their length or whatever the case may be. But I do think there were a lot of occasions where we, we got to do it better. Listen, this is the team we struggled with this the most in the regular season. And, um, you know, it's going to be a huge, huge part of the series for us. Well, it was a bit, yeah, it was number one on the things of things to do, but everybody knows that. I mean, we all knew that. Um, but ultimately, you know, again, there's two teams playing out there. They did a great job of getting to the ball. They did a great job of getting to our bodies. They were very physical. And we need to do a better job of not only hitting, but getting all five guys pursuing the ball. Well, Scal kind of stole my thunder, Brad. But um, in terms of speed versus the physicality, what did you see on film, I guess, uh, the other night in terms of the rebounding? But I guess more to the point, what did it take away besides just their offensive rebounds generating points for them? Well, I mean, they scored 23 second chance points. Um, obviously, that's a huge, huge deal when you're talking almost 20-plus you know, percent of their points the other night. Um, and so... You know, I think we need to, obviously, that's a huge, huge emphasis. And then the transition stuff was, a, I thought, largely generated by our turnovers uh, in the first half. We did a better job in the second half. So, um, you know, you, you, you give up 40 points in those two categories, it's going to be hard to win. No, I think. I mean, I think we're very well aware of what all those guys are capable of, and I think one of the things that, as you're in this, you know, especially from the coaching side and the playing side, you know, you have to prepare for, you know, a guy like Jimmy Butler and say, okay, you're not going to be able to stop him. You're going to have to do your best to limit him. This is how you do it. And you have to play the percentages a little bit on some things. Whereas you're looking at guys that maybe don't have a consistency of a Jimmy Butler, but are cap you're looking at what those guys are capable of and making sure that they don't get in that rhythm of what they're capable of. And he did the other night, and it really hurt us. Um, and hats off to him. Uh, but at the same time, we got to do a better job of breaking a guy's rhythm when he gets going like that.